Hi there, everybody. This is Vic Moss from the Drone Service Providers Alliance. I'm going to do something a little different today. Um, what I'm going to do is um, review and unbox the Parazero Safe Air System for the Mavic 3s. And I uh, got one yesterday, so I uh, thought I'd put it together. It's not something I normally do. Uh, I just wanted to put this out there kind of. It's new. Um, it's, it's critical for what you want to do if you want to fly over people with the waiver because they are ASTM certified. So this is what we're doing. Um, as you watch this, you'll realize why I don't do very many reviews, uh, any reviews really in a long time. Definitely no unboxing videos. Uh, set up a little bit of a makeshift studio in my office here and uh, attempted to do that. Took it out in the backyard, flew it a little bit, just to kind of give it a little bit of a, give me a little bit of an idea about how it flies uh, surprisingly well. I'll just leave it at that for now and you can watch this. Um, we're recording this. I'm recording this before the uh, uh, 2024 Commercial UAV Expo in Vegas uh, next month, September 2nd through 5th. Um, so if you if you watch this before then, stop by the Parazero booth. They will have one there. And uh, also on Tuesday morning, Tuesday afternoon, from uh, 2, 12.30 to 3.30, I believe. Maybe it's 1 to 3.30. I don't know. But I'll, I'll put a link up there and you can double check it. But uh, we have a session going on. A number of us will have a session in the drone um in the drone hub. And then also I'll be hanging out with Pilot Institute, with the FAA and with DJI. So come by and say hi if you can find me. I'll also obviously be in doing sessions and stuff like that. But stop by and say hi and enjoy the video. Let me know your thoughts below. Yesterday, um, I got a fun little package from UPS. They dropped off my new Safe Air from Pair Zero for the Mavic 3 um, system. So um, it'll fit on the Mavic 3 Pro, which is I'm going to use it on for the most part, Mavic 3 Enterprise. Um, and thermal without the without the accessories on the top, unfortunately, but physics. Um, and also the other Mavic 3 series, the uh, um, classic and, and that, that kind of stuff. So let's see what we got inside this fun little box here. Um, enabling drones to operate safely everywhere. Fun little box. Um, I do have the serial number right there, so I'm going to have to obviously keep track of that. So let's see what's in here. Oh, yay. We have stickers. Um, if you can see, I like stickers there. A uh, little box, a little top here. Cardboard, congratulations on your new system. There's a support page. Um, gives you an address there. Register, download, read manual. Carefully, it says, which um, obviously I'm going to strongly suggest you do that. Uh, this is a parachute system for your drone, so uh, you better know what the heck you're doing when you're using it. Uh, tutorial videos, uh, nice. I'll go ahead and link some of those in the description here. And then update safe your device as necessary. There's a QR code right there. So the update is probably going to be for the, um, you know, uh, the firmware, that kind of thing. Uh, use our systems and our systems are professional safety devices. It's important you follow instructions. So they tell you to follow the instructions twice and watch tutorials. So I would strongly suggest you do that. All right. So we have this, the actual system itself. Um, and this would be the uh, part where you attach to your drone. Um, Remove before flight. Okay, so that comes off before flight, obviously. Spring loaded, which is kind of nice. Um, it, it's not py pyrotechnic, it's spring, so you can actually carry this on an aircraft if you're going somewhere. Carry it on, you got two of those, that's kind of nice. Here you've got, these are mounts. Double check that, but I'm pretty sure these are mounts. Um, so we can move it between drones. Uh, again, I'm a, once I get the instructions, we'll do all that fun stuff together. Um, just a little piece of cardboard separating things. Ah, this is the transmitter. So you can actually um, trigger this uh, remotely with this, or um, it can trigger. It, it'll trigger automatically under certain circumstances, which we'll go into. Where actually the the um, tutorials to do that. Uh, and a USB to USB C charger. You know, USB C port there. Got the button there. USB C port right here. Awesome. Cool. Okay. Um, I'm going to get the drone out. I'm going to put it on, on the, uh, for this anyway, I'm going to put it on the Mavic 3 Pro. And let's take a look and see what we've got going on. Before I start putting this on the Mavic 3 Pro, I uh, thought we'd go over the, uh, the um, product page real quick. Uh, as mentioned, this is ASTM F3322-22 approved. So it is the latest ASTM standards. So that's kind of nice. we got an overview right here. Um, all this down here. If we go to features and functionalities, it kind of gives you an overview of that as well. It is compatible with all the DJI Mavic 3 series. Now, obviously, except um, the ones, you know, excluding modular accessories. So that would be the uh, RTK Top Hat, 
possible, um, you know, if you've got the spotlight on it or if you've got the speaker on it, that kind of stuff. Designed to protect your payload. Even more importantly, in my opinion, it's designed to protect the people you're going to be flying over. So you have automatic triggering. Um, you have data logs from a black box. Well, that's kind of nice. Uh, mounting and uh, mounting necessary installation components. Obviously, um, that's what we'll go into here in a bit. Some of the technical information, you've got weight. Uh, you've got minimum safe altitude. This is important because if you're flying under a waiver, you have to be 62.7 feet above the crowd in order to comply with your waiver uh, um, provisions. So make sure you do that. I would suggest maybe even 65 or 70, and that's just me. I like to be a little more conservative. And then your average descent rate, still kind of quick, you know, basically 13 feet per second. There's your foot pounds. So this uh, this is really nice in that it kind of gives you the information you need to know. We got some Q&A here. Um, this is, uh, let's see, see, even, even though it says you have to be at, um, what did it say, 67 feet, basically, um, it opens at 36 feet, so fully open. So that gives you a chance to get a little bit of a fall, um, come to, a, come to um, a, a reasonable descent rate, that kind of fun stuff. How is it powered? Um, it's built by LiPo, which is kind of nice. Um, you do need to charge that, so the battery's not replaceable, but uh, you can charge it up. How long does the battery last? Up to four hours. That's kind of nice. Forty-five minutes full charge, twenty minutes to eighty percent capacity. So if you do, if you do um, bring it down, uh, let's see. Will it guarantee? I'm going to go with no here. Um, I it's it it is, it is reducing damage to a minimum. So yeah, I don't this this system is not, in my opinion, not designed to keep your drone from getting hurt if if something happens. It's designed to keep people from getting hurt. Um, this we hear a lot. Let's see what it says here. Um, can they be repacked? Yes. Um, ASTM compliance systems, you have to send it back to ParaZero. Um, you can repack it yourself under the documentation, but if you want to continue to be ASTM compliant, which means if you're going to use it for a waiver, you do need to send it back. Um, insurance costs, that's going to be, <laughs> that's going to depend on your insurance carrier, obviously. Um, and yes, the system alone does not allow you to fly over people. Remember that. The system alone does not allow you to fly over people. Uh, you do need the waiver, and uh, here it says, obviously, in your country, uh, here in the United States, you do need a waiver to use this to fly over people. Uh, where can I find the tutorials? We'll need to know that. So we go to the support page for that. We'll do that here in just a minute. Oh, look, there it is again, support page. Um, protect bystanders, drone equipment, and payload. So that's really what it is. So let's pop over to the support page real quick, see what we have. And we have the Mavic 3 system, um, software, documentation, and videos. We've got parent documentation. Um, oh, here's the manual as well. So that's good to have. Um, we want to download the manual. So yeah, this is where you get your videos and that kind of fun stuff. And it'll be fun to watch. So okay, cool. We'll go ahead and go from there. Here's your videos, articles, um, related articles. This will be fun. We'll do that a little bit later. Or you can do this, obviously, on your own. This will be fun. Um, let's see what it looks like on the drone. One thing I did notice, um, when you're putting this on, uh, it, it's a little difficult to put on. It just takes some practice, obviously, uh, like I mentioned earlier. But what you need to do is you need to, these little tabs, these little tabs right here and right here, need to go into these little slots on the mount. So kind of a good idea to go ahead and just see if you can get them to sit on here. Just so you kind of know how it needs to feel. Obviously, this is right. But it, you, know, you know it needs to feel kind of... Kind of, kind of snug, so make sure you get that done first. But So when I did this, um, I've, got, I've got two ways I'm going to be mounting strobe here. I'm using the micro for, if I've got the PRS on, uh, I'll use the uh, Firehouse Strobe Micro. That'll go right here. And if I'm not flying with that, either I'll use the micro or the Arc 5s from Firehouse. I'll put them right there. But basically, what's this? Once you get this on, again, it takes a little bit of practice. Put these on. I'm going to get those slots lined up with your with your tabs. It doesn't say to do this upside down, but I figured out it's a lot easier for me to do this upside down. So you slide that down in there. Get it pretty tight. You don't want to over tighten it, but you want to get it pretty tight. And then again, make sure it's not it's not um, interfering with your sensors. If you've got the micro on here, like this, when this deploys, it will deploy counterclockwise. This will go this way, this will go this way, stop that, that particular stroke or that, that um, prop. This will not interfere with your deployment, which is important, obviously. 
Um, don't put it on here. That'll 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 affect things. Um, uh, Pair Zero says, do not put the strobe on top. But if you put it right here on the Mavic Threes, it'll be fine. Now this is not a recommendation from Pair Zero. This is a recommendation from myself. But I did go ahead and verify with him that if your strobe is right here, whether it's the micro or the Arc Five or whatever you're using, you know, as long as it doesn't interfere over here, I suggest the micro because of the because of the pin right there. Um, it will not affect your deployment. So that's a good safe place to put it. And as we know here, uh, it is required for the waiver. Here it is in all its goofy looking glory. Let's take it out in the backyard and see how well it flies. So here I am. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give it a test, uh, see how it flies in my backyard here. Uh, turn everything on. Uh, I've got 18 satellites, so it's not affecting uh, satellite, which is one of the things I was worried about sitting on top like that. Dropped down to 17, but 18. Uh, actually, in my house or in my yard, when I'm in my backyard, I have a little bit of trouble uh, bouncing between usually 16 to 18 satellites. So this is perfectly normal for what I normally am doing. Uh, but let's go ahead and put it up, uh, get the props on. Um, no warnings, no warnings at all, which is kind of nice. Uh, I do live in a 500 meter zone, so I did get that warning, but I get that warning every single time I do that, every single time I fly. Um, in, my, uh, in my backyard, seems to be working okay. Seems to be working very well. I'm seeing a little bit of a wobble going up and down and a little bit of rotate, wobble a little bit like this when I'm rotating. Um, but not bad. Uh, I got a little bit of a breeze out here. I have not tested it yet, obviously, and something that's um, kind of breezy. Um, right here, I'm just kind of being really careful. I want to keep it down below the trees at this point. Um, give it a little bit of a, see how it turns. It turns, actually, it turns pretty good. I'm not seeing any kind of issues with that. Um, if I come to a stop fairly quickly, yeah, I'm going to get a little bit of a wobble, but that's not terribly surprising. Uh, it's not hovering extremely well, but that's mostly going to be ground effects. I'll pull it out here just a little bit, bring it up a little bit, way below, um, way below the the, uh, the minimum I'm allowed. So that's not too bad. That's not too bad. I've got 19 satellites now, so this is not doing too bad at all. Uh, a little bit of a wobble going up and down. Um, not bad though. And again, I'm not getting the warning that says, hey, I've got prop guards, even though I'm flying at 6,000 feet here in Denver, MSL, obviously. Um, if I've got prop guards on my minis, it warns me. So this is kind of nice. I'm not seeing any issues. I will tell you, though, that these prop guards are a pain in the butt to put on. So, uh, But once they're on, boy, they're on. They're not going to fall off on you, which I guess is sort of nice. But they are really tight going on. Um, I've got the PRS on there, the prop guards, my little uh, FHT, my Firehouse Strobe Technologies, or Firehouse Technologies Mini Strobe, which is kind of nice. Um, I'm pleased. I'm looking forward to putting this out in real world and see how it performs, but um, I'm not really seeing much of an issue at all. It's kind of nice to be able to just have this up there, looking forward to really kind of seeing what I can do with it uh, under real world situations. Overall, very pleased. One thing I do want to mention real quickly before I put everything away is that one thing that really surprised me is I did not get any warnings um, on the controller. I didn't get any overweight warnings. I didn't get any prop warnings or prop cage warnings, anything like that. The only warning I got is the warning I always get when I fly in my backyard is that I'm at a 500 meter limit. So it's kind of nice that the drone itself is not really realizing what's going on and then limiting you like it will sometimes um, with prop guards on say the mini series uh, it will say hey i got prop guards you know i'm going to limit things a little bit it doesn't do that here apparently so and i'm at uh, i'm at six thousand feet so even at the higher altitude uh, here in denver it's really not an issue so anyway just want to pass that along